you want that Annie, but D-Clone can be a real bugger sometimes. Maybe even in the past, you've ran out there with your character. Ooh, I'm going to take this guy on. Wah, wah. Didn't really work out for you. Well, there could be certain reasons in particular why it didn't work out for you. And that's what we're going to go over today. And hopefully some tips that will help you out get that Annie at some point here in the future. Now, right off the bat, we'll talk about how do you actually get to fight the Diablo clone in order to get your Annie charm. Now, first of all, on single player, all you have to do is take one SOJ and sell it to any vendor. When you do that, you'll see the prompt that evil has walked in Sanctuary, and then the first super unique monster that you go to will then spawn the Diablo clone. Now, getting that SOJ on single player can be quite the problem, but actually there's a place where you can get it the fastest possible. It's not particularly super fast all the time unless you get real lucky, but if you go run Nightmare and Daryl on a high player's difficulty count with a bunch of magic find, which isn't really a problem, once you have a sorceress or something like that, that's already a high level, you can take her out real quick. That is the place where you'll have the best odds of dropping that Stone of Jordan. Now, online is not the same as single player. You can't just sell one SOJ yourself and have D clone spawn in your game. Actually, as a community, you need to sell between 75 and 120 Stones of Jordan before D clone will spawn. But after that happens, it is similar as single player. You're in the game. You go to a place where there's one of the super uniques, and that is where D clone will then be. So it could take forever for you to sit here and wait for the different messages you get in order to find when D clone's actually going to spawn. But you don't actually have to do that. There's websites out there where people will post when they see these messages and notify the community. I'll link to one of them down in the description. It is just the best one that I know about. I'm not affiliated with them or any other website that does this kind of thing. But it's just a link to one to where they will notify you and you can go look at that particular page to see when the D clone's going to spawn and on what server, what region it's gonna spawn on. Now, the first real reason you might be struggling to take out Diablo clone is you're choosing the wrong location in order to spawn. Now, there's lots of popular areas, but let's say you are some sort of cold sorceress and you go ahead and go out to the Frigid Highlands waypoint. Well, all of Eldritch and Shanks minions are gonna be immune to cold, so you're not gonna be able to deal with them and then eventually take out D clone. It's just gonna be too hard because you'll never be able to get rid of those other monsters. You wanna choose a location to where you can fight Diablo clone one-on-one. -on -one. So some of the most popular ones are places, like I said, the Frigid Highlands, if you're not any type of cold build. Another popular one is Act 1 going out to Rakanishu, because all the monsters in Act 1 in generally are pretty weak. One place that I used to always go all the time is head out to Pindle, because actually you can fight D-Clone, fight D-Clone, especially if you're an up-close melee character, and if you ever get into any trouble, you can simply click on the stairs and head down and right out of danger and then you could pop a town portal right there and head back right next to Mala to reheal up, get more potions, and get right back in there instantly. That is also still a very great option, but there is actually a new place that I found relatively recently that is my new favorite. That is actually to go to the Arcane Sanctuary, head back through the portal that's right there at the waypoint, and then D-Clone will spawn there where normally Fire Eyes would be. There is actually a door right there next to the portal that D-Clone cannot go through. So if you ever want to cast through the door and have the stuff hit the D-Clone, that is one way to do it and you are in almost no danger at all. So after kind of discovering this new area, that's pretty much my go-to and I would recommend it for pretty much any character in the entire game. You have that door that he can't go through and you can sit on the other side of the wall for safety. Maybe if you're a Hydra Sorceress, you could actually cast Hydras right through the door and take out D-Clone that way. And not to mention, you do have that portal right there, so if you ever get into any danger, if you are a melee character or something, you can hop right back through that portal, and there's a waypoint right next to you. Now, another reason you probably are struggling with D-Clone is that you don't necessarily have the best character to do it. Now, that can easily happen, and it did happen to me in the last ladder. I went with a Nova Sorceress with no intentions of farming keys, no intentions of going and taking out D-Clone. So when D-Clone did spawn, I couldn't really do a whole lot, because that's not what this character was for. That's what I never intended to do. So just remember that there are some instances where your character just literally will not be able to do it. It's perfectly fine. It doesn't mean you suck. It doesn't mean your character sucks. It's just not what you intended to do. So you might have to go ahead and call upon a friend to come in there with their smiter or something like that and just chop, chop, chop them down, no problem. So speaking of the smiter, let's talk about characters that are absolutely amazing at taking out D-Clone and then some other ones that are pretty darn good as well. Now, in Diablo 2 Resurrected, generally melee characters, as far as killing monsters, are not as good because they go at single targets at a time, and they're just not good at a massive amount of area of effect. So you can't take out mobs really fast. You can't find a bunch of high runes. But it is actually the exact opposite when you're talking about taking out D-Clone. 
the melee characters are actually the best ones. Now the smiter is known as the go-to because it has the smite skill and it never, ever, ever misses. So pretty much all you need to do is have that smite going, you have some form of life tap, and then some crushing blow, and you will chop that D-clone down in no time. I think the lowest I actually seen, and they had to adjust some of the game files in order to even make this happen, but I believe Extimus even took out D-clone with what I think was a level 9 smiter. That's how easy and how good this character can be for doing things like farming keys, doing the ubers, and taking out this D-clone. Now other characters that are great for doing that stuff is really any of the melee builds. So there's multiple of the Barbarian builds. I've done it with Frenzy with dual lightsabers before. So those are not hard to find particular swords. They're incredibly cheap. Pretty much any sword that you're going to hit D-clone a lot, you want to get that attack rating up and have that crushing blow on. So you can do it with the Werebear Druid or the Fury Druid. So that would be the Werewolf. I've seen it done with the Kixin or even a Paladin Zealer if you didn't want to go the Smite route. All those melee characters, as long as you throw on something like Gore Riders or Goblin Toes to get that crushing blow, there's a lot of other ways to get it as well. You can take out D-Clone no problem. Now a very important thing here is to get Life Tap. It's essentially like Life Leech on steroids. Once you get Life Tap on and as long as it is up and active at all times, you essentially are not going to die if you're a melee character. You can actually shop one of these wands straight from Akara within just a few minutes. A little bit harder to get, but an easy source of Life Tap as well is getting those Dracul's Grasp. They are unique vampire bone gloves. And also Exile, which is a pretty expensive rune word for the Paladin, but it has a very high percentage of life tap and it is a very good shield to use on that Smiter. Now, if you're any of the casters, I've seen the Diablo clone taken out by the Hydra Sorceress because you keep spamming them out there and they just keep hitting and hitting and hitting. And also you can also buy a wand from Akara similar to the life tap one, but you can get a lower res wand for any of those casters. Now, if you are the casters, you're going to have to be kind of more specific ones. So you'll need to be sitting back and kind of casting and teleporting around and trying not to get hit. So things like the Hydra Sorceress, things like the Blizzard Sorceress are going to be some great options for casters in order to take out D-Clone. Now, I did mention them a little bit in some of the other ones, but there are certain properties on different types of gear that you want to have in order to help out your D-Clone fight. And if you don't have them or you're using them incorrectly, that could be the reason possibly why you can't take out D-Clone. Now, one of the most important is that crushing blow on melee characters. Now, this works whether you have it on your character or whether you have it on your mercenary. Your mercenary can hit D-Clone and get those crushing blows to proc, chopping off that health in massive chunks. And then obviously also for your melee character, as you're hitting, you'll be chopping that health off as well. Now, the next type of property on your weapons and stuff you want to look at is open wounds. With this particular type of property, it'll actually keep Diablo Clone from Rehealing. Now, literally, what it does is it keeps Diablo bleeding, so slowly losing health, which will eliminate and stop Diablo from slowly gaining health. Nothing's worse than getting Diablo cloned down to like a third health or even less than that. Oh, you run out of potions, you go back to town and get them, you come back out. Oh no, the health is full again. It just took you all that time to get it down, and now he's just rehealed. Open wounds can help prevent that. You can either have this on your melee character or have a weapon on your mercenary. That has those open wounds. Now a similar way to stop D clone from healing is actually using prevent monster heal when it is on a weapon. Now very important to note this does not apply from a mercenary. It has to come directly from your character. There's actually a simple cheat trick in order to get prevent monster heal regardless of what character you're using. You can actually go over to Mala and shop for the javelins there. If you look around enough eventually you'll find one that has prevent monster heal as a property on it. Now, even if you're a sorceress, you can run out, equip those javelins and throw them and throw them until eventually you hit. And that will then apply the prevent monster heal. Once you do that, you can go ahead and cast and cast and cast your spells and D-Clone will no longer heal himself. Now, this is common misconception because prevent monster heal does not work on Ubers. It does actually work on D-Clone when you're trying to farm for that Annie. Now we'll come in and talk about your mercenary. Now mercenaries are not necessarily needed depending on your character, but they can do a little bit to help you out. One problem is though, it's very difficult to get your mercenary to survive that D clone onslaught. Generally with the mercenary, his survivability is just like any other location. Getting those resistances mega high is mega important and having life leech on your character in order to heal back once you take a bunch of damage. So some little tips though with that mercenary that a lot of people do, whether helping survivability or helping you out kill D-clone faster, you can out always throw on treachery. You can head out and get your mercenary to get hit a bunch. When that fade procs, then you can actually swap out that armor 
to a different armor if you wanted to. That way you get all of the stuff that you would get from having Fade, but you can use any type of armor, whether it's one that has even more tons of resistance or one that helps out his damage. Now I say his because generally I always go with the Act 2 Mercenary as tried and true and standard, but seeing some of the benefits of the Act 5 Mercenary perhaps now, that is another good viable option. So for properties, it's very similar to any melee character. If you want your mercenary dealing a bunch of damage, getting things like crushing blow on your mercenary will chop off large chunks of health. On top of that, deadly strike, obviously doubling the damage of each attack and things like open wounds to keep D clone from healing. Now a real sneaky budget way to keep D clone from healing to get you able to kill him faster or possibly even kill D clone at all is throw the rune word malice on your Act 2 Mercenary. Now it only takes an Ith, an L, and an Eth rune, so it costs essentially nothing. It has Prevent Monster Heal on it, which does not apply from the Act 2 Mercenary, but the important thing is the 100% chance of open wounds. It might take a few swings for your Act 2 Mercenary to actually go ahead and hit Diablo Clone, but once he does, he will then apply that open wounds 100% of the time if he makes contact, and then D Clone will stop healing. Now that is a nifty little trick. Make sure you slap that like button before you go and subscribe up if you haven't done so already. Peace out, fellas, and don't forget, keep slaying.